You buy your first ham radio and you're greeted to this. It's on, but nothing's happening. What do you do when you get your first radio or, I don't know, maybe your third radio, and you're not sure if it's working? It sounds pretty simple for a lot of you veteran amateur radio operators or GMRS users, FRS, etc. But for those starting out, sometimes just having a radio on, you'd expect voices to start leaping out of it. And the reality is, is that's not at all what happens. You generally have to do something to make the radio actually give you something back, you know, a voice or some kind of an audible tone that it's working, maybe hitting a repeater or whatnot. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Anyone copy me on this repeater? Just seeing if I can make it. So the first thing you want to do, if you have it, is get a second radio. You're going to key them to the same frequency. In this case, I'm on 146.520 with my new radio and a radio that I know works. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test. Ah, okay, this radio replied and I could hear my voice coming out of the speaker. And So, all right, at least we know that this radio transmits. Now, what about the other side? Well, do it in reverse. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test. Well, this radio is about dead, but it worked. I could hear myself and even the uh, feedback gives you some kind of a message that it's working. Well, okay, so sure, you, you only bought this radio. This is the only radio you have on you, so why would you have a second radio? Well, the rest of this video is going to be helpful for you then. Most of these radios is VHF, UHF radios, and also pick up the NOAA weather system. And usually you will have one to two of those channels if you look up the NOAA frequencies that you can hear. So if your radio doesn't have a weather mode, you just hit a button and it goes into like a weather mode where you can scan up and down on the different channels, then you're gonna type in those frequencies and that should give you your audible indicator that it is working and you're able to hear something. Now, for those of you that you hear nothing on the weather frequencies, well, you could just be in a remote area where you not where you don't get any NOAA frequencies, which can happen. But if you had to look at the parts of your new radio and think to yourself, where is likely the biggest failure point? You might not be surprised to find out that it's the antenna. A lot of these inexpensive radios have really not very good antennas. And so that could be your problem. Well, how do you test that? Well, let's show you how to do that, too. Taking one digital multimeter, take one probe against the little threaded connector of your antenna, and the other, touch that little hole right in the center. Or if you have a pin, you touch it to that, and you should not see any activity on your meter. That would imply they're shorted. You mean to tell me you don't have a $10 digital multimeter from Harbor Freight? You should probably get one of those. Spoiler alert, those are good to have. If you have a shorted antenna, that means that the threaded bit of the antenna is showing continuity to the center pin. That generally means your antenna is bad. Your, your radio can't transmit out of a shorted antenna. If you find yourself in that situation, I highly recommend you take the link in the video description to signal stuff and get yourself a signal stick. It is a fantastic antenna. It performs very well. It's very flexible, a little bit better than your stock antenna, and it will perform a lot better than your stock antenna too. And the best news is if you used hamstudy.org to get your amateur radio license, well, the proceeds from all those sales, it's ran by the same company, go to keep hamstudy.org running, which is great news for amateur radio and a way to say a bit of thank you to the people who create the antenna and hamstudy.org. And that goes doubly for all of you who tested using exam tools. And if you tested online via Zoom, you probably used exam tools. So guess what? All of those companies, those entities, those projects are under one roof. We are thankful for everyone at hamstudy.org, exam tools, and signal stuff. Signal now, stuff. your antenna's fine. This is the other side of this coin. So maybe it's your radio that's having a problem, and you don't have a friend or buddy that you can catch up with. Maybe you can go to a ham club to see if they can check out your radio and see if you're actually hearing anything or not. That would be a good thing to do at this point. But if you really think it's broken, it's not working, well, hopefully you took some of my advice from the past. You purchased your first radio off of Amazon, and you just send it back to them. Most of these cheap Chinese radios are totally fine to just ship back to them. In some cases, if you're a long-time Amazon customer, I've heard that Amazon will just refund you or send a replacement and, and not even ask for the old radio back, particularly if you're talking about the $17 Baofengs. Don't quote me on that, and certainly don't ask Amazon if they're going to give you a free radio. But keep in mind that most of the time, if you buy on Amazon for these cheap radios, 
you can just send them back. And that's one of the reasons why I recommend you buy off Amazon. So this is a TID Radio H3. I'll have a link in the video description. You can check it out. And also that $17 Baofeng, which is a good second radio for doing this kind of testing. Now, after getting your radio out of the box, fully charging it and attaching an antenna, some radios come with two antennas, and so you may need to look at the writing either at the base of the antenna by the threaded bits or on the side for the frequencies that this antenna supports. It's not that it won't be able to listen. In, in fact, it'll probably listen just fine. It'll receive just fine. It's the transmitting you want to worry about. It's the transmitting where you want to have the appropriate antenna on. So after you get it out of the box and you think you've got it all put together, turn it on and then go ahead and hold down the scan button. Okay. I recommend you start out on two meters, which is gonna be about 146.520. Go ahead and make a memory channel and add that to your radio if you don't know how to do that. Consult your manual. And then hold down the scan button and you just wanna start the scanning process. Scanning begins. A lot of the times, what most people should be doing when they get their radio out of the box is just start scanning. This could yield repeaters that are in your area, simplex communication of people talking, or it'll just sit there and you'll see numbers flying around. Uh, that is a fantastic way to just stumble on to frequencies, signals that are in and around your home, all that fun stuff. Occasionally you hear some static breaks, a little bleeps and bloops coming out of the radio, and that's a sign that, hey, it's working, so at least you've got that. Now, one of the most often heard issues that I have that people tell me when they get a new radio is programming a repeater on a handheld. If you haven't already, go ahead and download the application Chirp. I will link a video that you can go check out how to use Chirp with your new radio. Chirp works with Baofengs, but it also works with most Chinese radios as well as analog radios by Japanese companies. And by analog, we're talking the non-digital voice radios, which is what a lot of people are buying these days. So at least you've got that option and you can check that out. Now with repeaters, there's usually two fundamental issues that people have wrong. One, they've got the wrong offset, and two, they've got the wrong tone. Now I'm gonna explain what those things are. An offset is the frequency that you're listening on. When you transmit, it will be slightly lower or slightly higher. The offset is set by the repeater owner, the person who established the repeater and set it up. And they usually have special filters called cavities that allow the repeater to listen and transmit on a very close adjacent frequency. Normally you can't do that. Normally you don't want to do that, except in the case of a repeater. When people screw that up by either going with the plus or the minus, it makes their radio not be transmitting on the frequency the repeater is expecting them to be on. So the first thing you have to do is make sure you have a good programming information for that repeater and I highly recommend you check out repeaterbook.com. There you can pinpoint and dive in on your particular location, your state, your county, your city, and get even closer than that with things like which type of radio are you using? Do you want two meter only or 70 centimeters only? Or maybe you're only looking for digital modes. Repeater book has a lot of information that should get you up and running and give you the information you need for most repeaters in your area. Now the second item, and this is one that usually trips people up more than the offset. An offset is usually a, just a menu setting. You go in, you find repeater offset, and you set it to negative or positive. And those are pretty standard. Repeater owners don't usually deviate from those offsets very much at all. Where you do run into problems though is tone squelch. And usually every repeater, when you're transmitting into it, requires something called a sub-audible tone. And often in the States, it's the CTCSS tone. That tone is going to be in Hertz displayed on your radio, and it's transmitted along with your voice when talking when you hold down the PTT button. What can sometimes happen is the repeater owners could change the programming of their repeater, maybe changing the sub audible tone and the bookkeeping, so to speak, repeaterbook.com, for instance, could be advertising a different sub audible tone than the one that's on the repeater. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes you need to double check that information. So before you throw your radio into the river or the lake, make sure you're checking to make sure that that sub audible tone is still accurate. On the radio side of the house, there's usually two things you have to do. You have to tell your radio that you want to transmit sub audible tones. And then, then you need to set the Hertz of the particular CTCSS tone that the repeater is listening for. 
There are always exceptions to the rule, and this radio is no different. It's transmitted CTCSS tone. You just turn off and on by just going up and down on the menu setting transmit CTCSS, and then you just lock it in by hitting that little blue button. And that's all you have to do. If you want to turn it off, scroll back to the off. It's usually two separate items. I know that doesn't make sense, but for most radios, there's usually two menu options. One to set the hertz of the tone and one to tell the radio to transmit the tone. Now you set all this up when you're running in VFO mode. So you're going to set the frequency, you're going to set it to positive or negative for offset, and then you're going to set the sub audible tone. Then you will save that to memory. I like to give it a title that matches the call sign of the repeater, and I'll usually put it in my next blank memory channel on whatever radio I'm carrying about. So you've got your radio all programmed with a repeater. You're ready to test it. Ah, wait, don't just key up inside your house. Go outside, even if it's cold, just for a second. Go outside and try with a clear shot to where you think that mountain or high mounted antenna will be. Stand with it in clear space, key up, give your call sign, and say test, or checking to see I can hit the repeater. If you get back a staticky noise or a beep, that's a courtesy tone. That is your notification that you not only were able to hit the repeater with your RF, but your sub-audible tone was set correctly, and the offset, the repeater heard you, started pulling in your RF, amplifying it and retransmitting it on the receive frequency. So good job. You're transmitting on the appropriate frequency. Your subaudible tone opened, as they say, the repeater. And when you finished and let go of the PTT, the repeater notified you that you did it correctly by giving you a courtesy tone. Another cool feature is Seek CTCSS. Some radios have it. So you would take a radio that has a re repeater programmed and you transmit next to the Seeking radio. And if you give it a couple of seconds, it'll find it once it scans through its list. Now, this might be the most obvious thing in the last tip, but make sure your volume is up on your radio. Might sound crazy, but we've all been there and accidentally left the volume all the way many down. different radios, even very inexpensive ones. And they all have subtly different ways of programming repeaters. This is one of those situations where I recommend you download the manual, likely to your phone, or maybe print out the instructions for setting things like your subaudible tone, your offset, and saving a channel so that you can keep it with the radio if you need to program in the field or when you're out and about. When people run into problems and they can't bring up a repeater, it's usually two fundamental things. They're not in range of that repeater, no matter how good or accurate the repeater programming is, or they have the repeater programming wrong. If it's the latter, then you need to go back through the radio, check your subaudible tones, check the positive, check the minus, and make sure you have that set. As always, friends with radios or having yourself a backup radio is always likely gonna make the checking of all of this a lot easier. And yeah, you can set a receive subaudible tone on your testing radio, and your transmit subaudible tone can open up the squelch of this one. Kind of an advanced process to do, but it's a similar thing. There's gonna be a setting in the menu for your testing radio that you're going to set to a receive tone and you're going to make the hertz of the sub audible tone the same so that when you transmit it'll hear it on that end that will help you out a lot because you can basically pretend like this is a repeater because it kind of is in the way that you're looking and if you see the red light come on when transmitting then you know you did it right so there's the last little tip on if your radio is not working or you can't hear anything or you can't make it into the repeater That'll help you out to figure what it is you did wrong. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed this, or maybe you have another hack or useful tip in testing your radio out, whether it's receiving appropriately or you got that pesky repeater programmed correctly, leave it in the comments below. I would appreciate it. I'm Josh KI6NAZ, 73.